Hey guys, Ivan here and you're looking at a 2022 pre-judging of Chicago Pro and it looks like Anton Voyant is winning this show, hands down, I mean he brought insane level of conditioning, I thought in my previous video I said it was probably his turn to win a show or Andrea Muzi, but as you can see Andrea Muzi kind of failed with conditioning this time around, you know some of these guys they come sharper and sharper but some of them fade and as you can see Anton definitely sharpened up but unfortunately for him Andrea Muzi faded away a little bit. As you can see, the other guys in this top five lineup are also Tim Boresheim. That was pretty much expected. Uh, he also brought better conditioning. He's on the left right here, and uh, he also brought better package. But there are certain structural uh, flaws that he cannot surpass. On the far right, you have Tony Burton, and uh, look at his back. His back double bicep is without a doubt, unarguably, the best in this lineup. Look at his back double bicep kind of looks like a mini Ronnie Coleman, also his conditioning was very sharp, through the glutes, through the back, that back density was too much for these guys, he absolutely blew them out of the water here, as you can see, he destroyed them in that back, but it seems like it's not gonna be enough for him to either win this show or play second, it looks like Andrea Muzi is gonna be second, and I'm talking about the way the judges were moving them. Damn, look at Tonio's back in the back lat spread. He's so much better than everybody here in this lineup. Than everybody. It's insane back. He has crazy back. But unfortunately, again, it's not gonna be enough. I mean, I just called him mini Ronnie Coleman because he is quite small. He's a short guy. He has a great shape, great conditioning, insane back, but, you know, he's a little bit short. Obviously, he's gonna be placing higher than the guy on the right, the bald guy with the mustache, I don't even know who he is, honestly, I'm sorry, also based on the way the judges are moving these athletes, Anton seems to be winning this clearly, and not just based on the way the judges are moving them, also based on his look, I mean, he definitely brought insane level of conditioning, and he's not really getting dwarfed by anybody here, he's just as big as some of these guys, or bigger, but more conditioned. So he definitely deserves to win this show, and he will go to the Mr. Olympia, does he deserve to go to the Mr. Olympia? Well, any pro show winner deserves to go to the Mr. Olympia, but if you compare this Chicago Pro to previous Chicago Pro, last year's Chicago Pro, I mean, this one is a little bit weaker lineup, let's be honest. I mean, take a look at this. You had Hunter Lobrada, who took fourth that year at the Mr. Olympia, Brett Wilkin, who was second here, very close second, he brought an amazing look to this stage, you had Max Charles, who looked amazing at his show, and Rolly Winkler, who was third at the Mr. Olympia at one point, 2018 Mr. Olympia to be more precise, and this was hardly Rolly Winkler at his best ever, this was merely a shadow of the beast of the great Rolly Winkler, anyways, it was a good lineup, it was a really good lineup, there was a lot of other great guys, unfortunately this year it wasn't the this deep of a lineup, but it was a pretty good show still. I mean, it was a good show in, in sense that these guys brought pretty good conditioning, especially Antoine, Tony Burton as well, Tim Budesheim too. I can't really say that Muzi was off either, but it wasn't him at his best. But we can be pretty sure that we saw Anton at his absolute best ever, definitely the best conditioning he ever brought to the stage, and it just looks good. People are saying that he downsized and he was around 260, so I don't know, if he downsized, how heavy was he last year, maybe 270 tops? So he lost 10 pounds, 10 pounds of what? Water and fat. So he was more conditioned this year than the last time, and this is him, he didn't downsize, come on, he was still very big. Very big, just not super complete, like 7th in the world, Ian Valier. Ian Valier exposed his weak points, but at a show like this, Chicago Pro, Anton dominates this stage because he does bring his absolute best, despite his health concerns. So even though he has those heart issues, he still prepped, he prepped hard, and between Vancouver and now, he brought better conditioning, but he also came in harder and fuller in a way, so he probably upped the gear, he probably, you know, did a little bit more stuff in that one week. Can one week make a big change? Hello? Yes, it can, if you know what I mean by that. So, yeah. Anton seems to be the clear winner of this show, second place most likely under a Muzi, but honestly I wouldn't complain if Tony Burton was second because of this insane back and better conditioning, yeah he was a little bit smaller, but for his frame he was big, if Sean Clarida can beat Regan Grimes and Sergio Oliva with conditioning and shape, why can't Tony Burton beat Andrea Muzi, Tim Boresheim and uh, whoever this guy is on the right?
Here is Antoine a day before the show, so whatever he did in the meantime, it worked. He came bigger, better, more conditioned, harder. I mean, look at the veins, look at the vascularity. Here is a clear shot for you guys up close. You can't really see all these details on the stage, you know, he's far away, but here you can see that he definitely got harder, more conditioned, peeled, shredded. Absolute best Anton Wyant ever. I'm sure he was using some kind of pre-workout in these final days where his energy was low and if that is the case with you guys, you can try supplementing with a pre-workout I would suggest to you Vintage Blast by the Old School Labs There is a link down below and if you use my code EVAN you get a 12% discount Alright, next is pretty sad news Jerry Ward passed away Completely unexpectedly I have no idea what happened I searched the comments so many people are wondering what happened, people want answers, but so far nobody knows. And it's probably too soon to even think about how, what happened, why did he die. A simple fact that he passed away should be enough, but people are curious, people want to know what exactly happened, because, you know, it's weird. As you can see, he still has active stories on his Instagram. He posted these 22 hours ago, so it seems like everything was completely fine and something happened. And I'm sure a lot of people will think it was something due to, to, to gear abuse. You know, like a heart attack all of a sudden. Or it was completely something else. Maybe it was a car accident. We don't know. We shouldn't speculate. He wasn't only active on his Instagram. He was, as you can see, active on his YouTube. Very active lately. As you can see, in the last five days, he posted five videos. And the last one was posted only yesterday. And I don't know if you guys follow Jerry Ward. Back in the day when I got into bodybuilding, I watched a lot of his videos. His older videos, you know, that he made like 10 years ago, I watched all of them. Some of them I watched even multiple times because he was one of the first YouTubers. First YouTubers who talked about fitness, bodybuilding, gear especially, stuff like that. He was pretty open about everything. And uh, those videos, the older ones, have a lot of views. Lately, he didn't have that many. As you can see, he was making videos, but he wasn't super concerned about how many views will he get, because production value of his views was always pretty low. It was just him on the camera, talking to a camera, talking to us, to, to, to viewers, and he never really made any thumbnails that were kind of clickbaity. It's always just himself on the camera. These were probably auto-generated thumbnails, you know, the, 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 the default ones. After he posts a video, he never really made any thumbnails, so he never really tried super hard to make a lot of views on YouTube anymore. But back in the day, he was one of the few, one of the first fitness YouTubers, so a lot of people were watching him. And if you guys started following bodybuilding at least like 10 years ago or maybe 5 years ago, unless you are super new to all this, then you probably know who Jerry Ward is, who Jerry Ward was, unfortunately. He passed away, unknown reasons for now. If I find out what happened, I will inform you guys, but, you know, he's dead, unfortunately. So rest in peace, Jerry Ward. Moving on to a brighter subject, Nick Walker with his most recent update, physique update, or should I be more precise, leg update. As you guys know, Nick Walker's weak point, one of few weak points, was his legs. No, I'm not talking about the details. He has insane, probably the best quad details on that stage, and also not from behind or from the sides. His hamstrings, one of the best hamstrings in the history of bodybuilding, if you ask me. Glutes also, and his calves are big. They don't look very aesthetic, very clean, you know, very healthy, but they are big. He has a lot of mass in the calves. What he's lacking is is quad sweeps. And why is that? That's probably because his legs are a little bit too short for his torso. So in that sense, that's his structural weakness. He doesn't have very long legs, so his quad sweeps are a problem, you know. There isn't a lot of room to grow too much muscle to make those quads sweepy, but he worked on that. He worked very, very hard. You can watch his videos. You can see him failing on a leg press. I thought when you fail on a leg press, the, 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 the whole thing is going to crush you because there is so much weight on it, but he somehow got out of it and he was risking it. He did that. He went to failure, complete failure on a leg press. That's how he trains. He trains like an absolute monster, like a maniac, and that's why he made this progress in his legs. As you can see, his legs are definitely rounder, bigger, fuller, 
and he started his prep 22 weeks before the Mr. Olympia. Why that long? Well, his coach told him so, so that's about it, but I'm guessing it's because he also, he mentioned, because his new coach doesn't really know his body, he wants to take more time to learn how his body responds, and also, you know, take the time, you know, get, get conditioned slowly, maybe a little bit ahead of time, not too much, just a little, so they can play around, they can try different stuff, and I'm sure it will work out, I'm sure he will pick properly with his new coach, even though this, this new guy, his nickname on social media is Dom Super Sliced, uh, he never really worked with this kind of an athlete, like a top top open bodybuilder and a really top, you know, top five, potentially winning the Mr. Olympia this year, so a whole lot of pressure is on that guy, he needs to bring Nick from being great to being the greatest in one year, you know how much work is that, how big of a pressure that is, I hope he's gonna stay calm and these guys will do a good job, but I know Nick is very much in tune with his body and I'm sure if the communication between them is on a good level, everything will run smoothly and Nick might even win the Mr. Olympia this year, how crazy that is, and I think it's possible. Whatever you guys think though, tell me in the comment section down below, like this video, and for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel guys, thank you so much for watching, all the best and bye bye.